All right, y'all. Welcome back to Shots of Honesty with Welcome I back. Hate Julian and Star Dawkins. Yeah. To start off the show, you already know we're going to take these shots. Got to get this shot rolling. And Tell them what you're drinking, Ju. What we're drinking. Oh Today, we on that Douce. Okay. Sponsored by Compound Miami. Thanks a lot, Compound. And Star scared to take shots already. Oh my God! Let's it, let's do a cheers. We're gonna do a cheers. What to we? what? An amazing week. How was your week? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. All right. Now, so do say, you got any do say stories for me before we start? I just started drinking it like two days ago. You like it? You like it over henny? It's it's smoother than henny. How about you? Anything you Anytime I ever had Duce, it was probably at like a 2K pool party. And it wasn't my Duce. It's probably like a nigga from out of town that fucked with me. Mm-hmm. He made me take a shot, shit like that. But I see I see like Duce is like the up north Henny. Oh, I feel you. So like how, how niggas from Florida and shit, they love like, Henny. They love Henny. What I get from all our parties and stuff, like everybody from New York and all them up north states. Fuck they with the Duce. Duce I guess cause You know Close ties to Hove But We supporting black owned businesses Okay Let's see if we can finish this bottle I hope not I hope so However I don't want to ramble any longer Julian I just want to know about your week Can oh, you enlighten us you see, I would I'm love stalling. to know You I, forgot to let them know where we at Y'all know where we at Sweet Cookie Wash Spa Y'all see the sign if you're on YouTube Anyway How about your week How is Twitter How is Instagram <laughs> You fuck the place up Then left What's good what, what, first of all, you just got off a flight. Where are you coming from? I just got off a flight. I went to New Orleans with my mom. Oh, did so, you bring your girlfriends? I didn't. It was just it was just a trip for me and my mom. Oh, okay. She treated me. She flew me out. My mom flew me out. And since we're talking about love languages today, how do your girlfriends feel about that? Do they like it when you leave just with your mom or any of their love languages quality time? I mean, they don't mind. I got to spend time with my mom. What about their love languages? Are any of their love languages quality time? Uh, yeah, I would say. Who? <laughs> All right, one of them. Who? <laughs> we want to know. Anyway. <laughs> what? Star. <laughs> I can't know. You starting too early. I think I should take a guess. Can I guess? Go ahead. I think Tiana's quality time and Genia's acts of service and words of affirmation. That's a great guess. That's all I can say. What, was I right? It's a great guess. We're taking shots of honesty. Can you be honest? Was I right or wrong? You're on point. Oh, my God, niggas. He doing this nigga thing where they answer the question but don't answer the question. Anywho, continue. How was your uh, trip? What you did? I mean, me and my mom pretty much, we we stayed you down. Visiting you guys with the shot company. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> she is not letting me live right now. Oh, my God. I just told her how nervous I was and all that. Just, uh. It's okay. It's okay. Yes. This is a safe place right. of honesty. Right. So. <laughs> <laughs> Star. Okay. Chill. Okay, fine. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> nah, but me and my mom, we stayed downtown in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. She pretty much wanted to go for my birthday. My birthday was August 14th. Mm -hmm. I was there. We brought in your birthday. It was lit. It was. I had fun. I can't remember the night. Yeah. You was lit. Yeah, I lit. I got pics and videos and shit. Okay, don't share them. <laughs> but um, my mom was really uh, enthusiastic about the food because it was both of our first time in New Orleans, and she heard a lot of things about the food. So her main like goal was to hit different restaurants and for breakfast, like breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So that's what was your favorite thing to eat? Other uh, than pussy, I'm not thinking I mean, you ate anything there. No, I didn't. <laughs> but um. I, I'm a simple dude. I like the fried chicken they have, but it just... Oh, my God. Nah, but... Not it, the it, seafood? I don't eat seafood. Are you allergic? I mean, it bothers me. Like how? <sighs> it just ma it makes me... Na I'm not... I wouldn't say I'm allergic, but it makes me nauseous. Okay. I can eat fish. The, the only seafood I could really eat is just fish, but anything... Snapper. Yeah. Jamaican Salmon, ass. <laughs> all, shit like that. I can eat that, but right. any, anything like shellfish and... I can't really get with that. But my mom was eating all the seafood, all the gumbo. She she really got to, like, diversify okay. her plate. What's your mom's love language? 
My mom? Yeah. Because I feel like people only make love languages exclusive to relationships, but I feel like you should know your parents, your siblings, and all of that. So her love language in relevance to me? Yeah. Uh, I would say quality time, definitely. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like you give her enough of that? Yeah, like I see her I see her twice a week, spend time with her, catch up with her, let her know what's going on in my life. She lets me know what's going on in her life. And then we try to plan two trips a year, like when it's just us. Okay, so in Shots of Honesty, we're going to take shots, both of us, and let's talk about what's going on in our life since you brought that topic up and I didn't. Okay, sounds like a plan. Right. I'll pour the shots. Go ahead. <laughs> She's crazy, by the way. Your mom? What's nah. her sign? Oh. Libra. Oh, she's not that crazy. My mom a Libra, too. And her um, love language is quality time also. So our mom is like twins. Yeah. You know, I told I told Malik. My Take I- your shot. <laughs> don't <laughs> you don't think you slick. Yeah. My idea for our first guest on the show should be our moms. That would be interesting. Let's do that next week. I feel like no podcast has done that. Yeah, I feel I just feel like it's gonna be dope because I'm like the total opposite of my mom. I'm like this super freak and my mom is like, Oh my god. I'm not the total opposite of my mom. But, I mean, she knows about my life and my lifestyle and stuff oh, my, like that. Oh, clearly my mama got to know. Yeah, so that's why I think it would be dope. Mm-hmm. But, How does your mom feel about your lifestyle and what's going on in your life? Take your shot. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Star is bugging. Yo, I'm a con artist, bro. <laughs> She's sitting here trying to look me in my eyes with a glass full of Douce. Okay, I'm going to take my shot right now. At the end of the day, my mom, she'll, she'll have her opinion, but, like, you know, I'm, like, I'm her only son. I'm her only child. Are you serious? I'm an only child, too. We twins. I hope not. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> but, so, it's whatever it makes me happy. That's, like, her bottom line. Aww. You have a sweet mom. She spoils me. Do you find that's a problem in your relationships? Do you look for women to spoil you? I do. Why, though? Because your mama already do it. I don't live with my mom. Okay. So okay, do you feel like you're supposed to spoil your women? I do. Okay. Are you spoiling them with their love language though? Which you still didn't Can't, answer what they are, but Hold on, but I got to tell you my my crazy week before we get into this. Okay, let's hear about your week now that you're ready. All right. So, I told Star before we do this podcast, I told her I'm a Speak my truth. It's been a lot of drama and shit going on. And I just wanted to speak from my perspective because um, I just want to lay my truths out. I feel like, of course, there's always three sides to a story. Um, In this case, four. Four sides. <laughs> four sides to a story. And I just want to give my perspective. It's not to bash anybody. It's not to put anybody out. It's not to pick sides. It's not to do none of that. It's just simply to speak my truth. So as your friend, before you go, go ahead. I want you in the future to stop explaining to people your truth. I I, because the last time we talked, I remember you saying that you don't like when people dislike you or you don't like offending people. But it's like I hate that you just had to explain that you're going to speak your truth. Like, I'm going to say what I'm going to say, just like everybody else say what they're going to say. I'm going to help you work on that. Do y'all agree with me? Comment if you agree with me that Julian needs to not feel like he has to apologize for being his true self, whatever that may be. Period. I'm going to work on it. Okay. Okay. So, I had an amazing birthday. As Star was there, everything. So, you know, my birthday is like a high time, but like a reoccurring pattern in my life is like whenever I'm like at a high, it's like usually followed by a low. It's like something brings me down Mm -hmm. one way or another. So, uh, Sunday after my birthday, my birthday was on a Wednesday. Sunday, I get a call and it's bad news, like okay. to my ears. Okay. I get a call, and pretty much I'm I'm being fed and shown this information. What that, information? That I'm being cheated on. Okay. Right. Have you ever cheated? Yeah. So that's one thing I was gonna cover. So for me, in a relationship, I've been on both sides of fidelity. I've been faithful. I've been unfaithful. 
I've had girlfriends that were faithful and girlfriends that are unfaithful. So this is not like new to me. Right. Right. So, and I'm the type of person in a relationship, uh, if I love you, if I love you that much, that I could forgive you for anything. I'm a forgiving lover. Like Will and Jada. I guess if you want to compare that, I don't know. I don't know like the details, but I hear shit about their relationship. But if you want to compare that, so I, I would consider myself a forgiving lover. Right. My heart's been broken. I've been cheated on and I've broken hearts and I've cheated on people. Mm -hmm. So I understand both sides of the spectrum. So there's really like not much that could hit me that I haven't gone through relationship wise. Right. Right. So like I was saying, I got hit with some bad news that I'm being cheated on. Right. And so my natural instinct is to react emotionally, mm -hmm. right? And I have a history of reacting emotionally to things, overly emotional, like where it's out of control and I lose my self-control, right. right? And like I would say I made mistakes in the past with my reactions with, with numerous things where like people could deem those mistakes as unforgivable mistakes, but I've been forgiven of those mistakes before. But even though I've been forgiven of th these mistakes in the past, they still weigh on me. Like I, I still feel guilty exactly. about. Exactly, it's like a criminal history. Exactly, it never it never goes away in my head or my heart. Right. So, given my history, given the past of just the relationship in itself, when I got this information, I've been working on myself. So I, I decided to take a different approach instead of acting off impulse, reacting overly emotional and probably doing something that I regret I just took myself out of the situation like broke up with the person I didn't know I didn't break up with the person I just took myself out of the situation removed all communication and just that means you broke up okay I mean but is okay did you take yourself out of the situation to get attention or did you do it because you wanted to break up no so my purpose for doing it mm -hmm. was that I needed to Space. Get I need to I need to get right mentally before I address the situation. I didn't want to address what what I saw and what I heard without being in the right mental space. I get it. That's true. So I isolated myself. I stayed at my mom's house for how long? Uh, four days. Without contact. Yeah. Oh fuck no. Mm -mm. I'm not judging you. No. So I I could see how I could see how. Like it will come across as something else. So I totally understand that. But my intent and my purpose was to just you, avoid. I, trust me, I get it. It's something I go through in my relationship. But because go ahead. literally, had I had I chose to go about the situation how I've done in the past, like it could have went a whole different way. Yeah, yeah, things could have got real crazy. Right. So I, it's not like I was not going to speak to this person ever again. I just wanted it to be, I wanted to be ready. Right. You just didn't know how to communicate that. You just decided, okay, the best way for yourself, you were not thinking, I was thinking of myself. Exactly. And that's okay sometimes. We do have to be selfish. Because mm -hmm. you could have been in jail instead of at this podcast right now. Exactly. So I, I was thinking of myself. But at the same time, I was thinking about this person too. And I just, I just didn't want to like... It's not even like a in jail thing. I didn't want to like verbally abuse this person or anything like that either. I didn't want to talk down this person because you know when you're super mad and super emotional, you might say a lot of things that you you don't mm -hmm. truly mean, mm -hmm. or you just mean at that time, or you mean at the time, right? That's, that's real shit. So I took myself out of the situation. I'm out of the situation, but being the situation that I'm in with three people. Mm -hmm. Wait, there's three of them? Three people, including me, I'm saying. Oh. I supposed to say what? No. <laughs> Who don't I know? <laughs> so, being the situation that I'm in, the other party involved decided to... Intervene. Intervene, take matters into their own hands. Was it on your behalf? It wasn't. I didn't. I did. It wasn't. When on I my say behalf. on your behalf, is it like a thing of like a you know you try my man, you try me? Yes, I would say that. But it it wasn't on my behalf as if like it was something that I asked for. Right. So you feel the other person may have just gotten emotional because you were sad. So it's like, you know, like when you're protecting maybe a little. Yeah, it was sister. definitely it was definitely out of protection for me. Yeah. OK. Right. 
So they're communicating this whole time. They're communicating. Uh, sp- so if you're not following, the two ladies are communicating. Julian is isolating. I'm isolated. They're communicating. They're getting into arguments. They're getting, you know, things of that nature. Because the the party that did not cheat, the female party that did not cheat, basically she still wanted the relationship with the person that cheated? No, I think she wanted it to be over. And did she know you were still wanting it and just isolating? Or did she think you also wanted I didn't, it to be over? No, I didn't know what I wanted. Did you tell her you didn't know? Uh, I, I relate to her information like, like I'm confused, I'm hurt, you know, but I never like solidified. Right. I, I get I get what you're saying, but it's just kind of like a thing of when somebody feels they know you and even sometimes a person that loves you feel like you don't even know what's best for you and they're doing what's best for you. I mean, that may be, that sounds like it could be. It could be, yeah, we don't know. I'm not speaking on anyone's behalf. I'm just saying. Right. Mm-hmm. So. I did I did some emotional things even though I was trying my hardest Aww, not to do emotional like what? things. All right. So uh, the first the first emotional thing I did which was pretty left field was I DM the dude. That was right field to me. What the fuck you doing? <laughs> nigga. But I didn't like I didn't DM him like I'm checking him. I just DM'd him and just like a player I gave him props. I said, "Props, bro. I heard I heard you fuck my girl." props oh that was like an emotional thing it was very emotional so, some may say that that's like out of bounds some niggas might be watching this and they might be like that's out of bounds you never dm'd it and but you did I, better than what my nigga would have did what, what he did. oh god jesus christ i don't, he would have been deported back <laughs> let's just leave it at that right but i wasn't even on no i was the whole time my whole mind was telling me do not be on no confrontational stuff mm-hmm. whether it's w- with whoever like, right. You feel me? Just take your L gracefully. Right. Like women do every day. <laughs> I mean, I I'm not, I I'm feel, projecting I feel my women energy on this man. I'm sorry. So I took my L gracefully, but I still, I just, I just, my purpose for doing that was to let it be known that I know what's going on. Okay. So you didn't want to communicate with the woman you're involved with that you know, but you want to communicate with the guy. So maybe the guy can communicate with the woman, send her the screenshot. Correct. So you wanted attention. No, I didn't want attention. I just wanted it to be known that I know what's going on because my purpose for that is that now when I, when I do finally speak to you, all you you have to do is tell me the truth because I'm a forgiven person. Okay. So if you tell me the truth, you feel me? This thing can go smoother. But why do you need to know the truth when you know? That's like when girls do that. Like, so what position did you fuck her in? Was it on this bed when you seen the thread with the position and where the bed was? <laughs> like, you know? I'm just I'm just the type of person where like I want to hear it from from the horse's mouth. Exactly. So that we could feel small in ourselves. Not small. Do you have you ever been in a situation where you cheated and you had to either describe or fess up to something someone already knows and it coming out your mouth made you like shrinking? Yes. So that's what it does to the party. You feel small. You feel like why do I got to sit and look the person I love in the eye? And and I guess I guess the reason I, I did it that way is because if the roles were reversed, that's that would have been exactly what would have been expected <laughs> yes. from me. True. It's true. So period. So because I'm the one getting hurt this time, I'm the one like getting betrayed, all these things, like at the at the very least, just tell me the truth. Okay. So is that how the week ended? No. It's it's not done. So do you need a shot? No, nah, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> Let me finish this story. I can't get too drunk for I tell this story. So, so, other emotional shit that I did. I was, remember I said I was staying at my mom's house. Mm-hmm. So I'm lonely. You feel me? I swear to God. I'm a, I'm a okay. dependent type person. What's your love language? Physical touch? All of these, to be honest. Did you take the test? What's the top one? I'll let you know. But I'm look, sorry. Go ahead. So look, like I'm in my feelings, like because I'm hurt. Mm-hmm. I'm not judging you. I'm hurt. Mm-hmm. So I'm t- I'm tweeting things like broken heart emoji, like pretty much everything that we talked about in the last episode. 
Mm -hmm. But not taking shots. I wasn't taking shots at nobody or like. It doesn't matter if you were. It's okay. You are hurt. You're allowed if you were. No, but remember how I said I don't want people to say, oh, he's a hypocrite. Because last week I said when when girls get mad and then they, they have memes and stuff like that. It wasn't like that type of thing where I was trying to put anybody out. I was just trying to pretty much show that I was hurt because I'm not speaking to this person. But I want this person to know that I'm hurt, but I'm not speaking to you yet because I'm not, I'm not mentally, mentally I'm not mentally ready to speak to you, mm-hmm. but I do want you to know how I feel. Mm-hmm. So I was, I was, um, tweeting little subliminals, mm-hmm. broken heart emoji, um, girl slide it into his DMs on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, shit like that. Like, wow. Why me? You know, but these are this is these are really my thoughts as I'm just laying in bed. Like, why me? So I'm doing that. I guess you could say that was for attention. It's I, I can admit that. Do you see how? Remember last week, if you listened, he was like, he feels like girls shouldn't do certain stuff like that because that's like, hey niggas, I'm going through problems, and it's okay if you're a hypocrite because. <laughs> No, it's it's okay. Look, Little Wayne said, "Don't go below the navel." Then the next thing you know, he's a pussy monster. Yeah. You can change your mind at any point in life, okay? Because of emotions, that's what emotions do. You don't have to feel bad. They alter for, everything. Alter liquor and emotions, same shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's okay. You're doing the things that you didn't like because you're in a situation that you didn't like. And what was the result of your tweets? I believe. This person interpreted it as if I was like trying to put them out or like, like, you know, put the situation out to the public. Does that person usually put y'all situations out to the public? Yeah. Okay. In a subliminal way, though. (laughs) Is it more subliminal than what you do? Or is she going to tweet? I'm so broken hearted. I guess mine was more direct. (laughs) Okay. Because so, you hurt. Yeah. And that's okay. Niggas ain't strong like women in that way. Yeah. Y'all are weight strong, not emotional. Correct. So, yeah, so I did that. I feel like that got misinterpreted. Then, fast forward, because I'm not trying to run on with this story. An altercation happened. It got, since I took back the communication from this person, I, I, I now see the wrong in that was now this person is led to believe whatever they believe because I'm not communicating with this what person. What do they believe? They believe the, the altercation was orchestrated by me. So this is a physical altercation? Yeah. Okay. I was not present. Okay. I was not present. Where all. Did it happen at the person's like... How, like kind of like how did it happen? Well, it, it, why would they a, feel it's orchestrated by you? That's why I'm Because thinking. of my tweets. Okay. You that's all they have to go by because I'm not communicating with them. So all they have to go by is the tweets that they see. I get you. So they they think it's like a revenge type thing. So but, I'm going to assume it happened with the other party, the correct. other female party. Okay. Yeah. But it wasn't. It was I actually I had no clue of what was going on. No so clue at all. So the other female party didn't communicate this with let me. Let you know it's about to go down. Nothing. Okay. I'm completely blindsided. Okay. And then the end of the story is that I wake up and now I'm the one getting bashed on all social media outlets. Because you orchestrated. No, not because I orchestrated. No, I'm saying that's what they're thinking. Yes. So now. So now. Did the other party defend you? The one that orchestrated it without telling you? Yes. So they publicly was like, no. Nah. Oh, no, not public. They didn't publicly defend me. Okay. How do you feel about that? I just feel like it's unfortunate because regardless if I was hurt or not, like I didn't want it to get to that level. That's not something. I agree. You feel me? I agree. I would never like. And it's, it's, it's like, it's just kind of like a, if you're in court, you know, when the judge asks you to bring somebody up to mm-hmm. testify that hey, I'm not this type of person. It's like maybe you could be looking for that. So it's like the two people you usually lean on in hard places are kind of not the people you lean on at this time. So I guess- And and just, just, just for clarity of the story, I did forget one part. So even though I was trying to stay strong and not speak to this person, I did. I did speak to this person. Not through text, though. I forgot that part. During the week, I spoke to this person through text. 
And I just said, just tell me the truth. That's all I want to talk about. Just tell me the truth. Oh, I saw this. And you say, I know your iPhone passwords. Right. But then this, I love that. It reminded me of me. So, so then the response was, I put this on my life. It's not true. Mm-hmm. So then that broke my heart even more. How do you know it's true? Did you see? I just know. Now you're doing this. I Th- just know. There's no evidence. I just, just know. know. I just know. I just know. Is it that you can't say where you got it from? I just know. He can't say where he got it from, viewers. I just know. Ladies, y'all know when we just know and we can't reveal our source because then it stopped being a plug. <laughs> I so feel you. When I get when I broke in, I'm not even mentally, I'm not even ready to talk to this person, but I say, you know what? If she gets something true, fuck it. Like, because how I'm thinking, how I'm thinking is that at the very least, if we can't be boyfriend and girlfriend, if we can't be in a relationship, if that's something that we I, can just be friends. I, yeah, that that that's like my that's like my plan C, at least like I've shared a life with this person for two years. Like literally did all y'all live together. No. OK, but I've shared a life with this person for two years. Mm-hmm. So I'm just thinking like, OK. If we can't be boyfriend and girlfriend, because sometimes that's just not meant to be, especially in this special situation that I have going on, I can accept that. But I wasn't trying to lose this person as a companion, as a friend altogether. There's really no side. Like, I'm not really a side taker. I feel like everything's up to God. But what I can say, and this is for all the viewers ever in a tricky situation when it comes to infidelity, um... I think sometimes we forget that the best thing to do is what is going to solve the problem. I know, like you said, you know, you're probably in your emotions, you you know, whatever. But even though the truth is something that you really wanted to hear, you knowing the truth already, like you said, you really know, what does it matter if they tell you or not? It's It's really what it should be is, am I moving forward with this person because I love them and I fuck with them? Or am I not? And, and that's and that's just, you know, every I'm not saying you can't have space, you can't have a breakdown, you can't have emotions. But what I'm saying is people have to understand the the progressive communication. Progressive communication is never, um, OK, well, I'm so sick of you. I'm so sad with this. I'm so th- what does that do? OK, now. Great. You know that I did this, whether I fess up or not. How do we go forward? Do you still fuck with me or not? And that's just for everyone. And it's something hard, but Lincoln and I do counseling. So it's something that our counselor said. Progressive. And and see, like, another another part that hurt me is that now after the physical altercation happened that I wasn't involved in, I was the one getting bashed. All my, all my I guess, quote unquote, dirt is being thrown at me. Stuff from the past that's not even relevant. And it's like, I understand because I understand like when you're mad or you're upset or you're furious, like you're going to resort to things bringing up, bringing up your, the worst thing about somebody. Right. But like, I was just hurt that just last week it was my birthday and like, you love me to death. Like you just ate dinner with my family mm-hmm. and everything was all good. Um, And I'm, and I was the one that got hurt in this situation. And I also got bashed on top of being hurt. So I think men have a bad habit. And maybe it's just humans. But hold on. But not to cut you off. That's not to say that, like, I did something wrong. So if at any point you want to tell whoever that I did something wrong, like, you don't have to keep it a secret. I don't expect you to keep whatever I did wrong a secret. Mm-hmm. But it just hurt me that. like I do. I, I mean, I don't. Wow. I don't, I'm saying I don't expect it. I would, it's greatly appreciated if it's between us. That's mm-hmm. greatly appreciated. But if, if at any point, whatever it is, is, is traumatizing you so bad where you have to let it, let it be known. It's, it's, it's okay. Some real shit. Do you feel like maybe being in a two person relationship could have made some of this not happen? De- I mean, definitely like it's pros and cons to, to being in that type of relationship, definitely. That's I wouldn't have said that. <laughs> I would, like if if I'm dating two people, I'd be too nervous. Like, oh my god, let me not even. But I just feel like you know within the whole story, like you said, it's pros and cons. But it's just certain things that could have been handled in house, and it's always harder when there's more than one person involved, whether that's family, friend, or other girlfriend. But I think things get really deep when you have three deep emotions. Because to me, what you're saying is 
it don't matter. I still love you. But I think with that love comes this. I would never want nothing to happen to you. Whereas somebody else might not feel that same love, but they feel that love for you. Mm -hmm. So guess what? They're not forgiving with you. They want to hurt that person because that person hurt the person they love. But they're forgetting, you know, these two people love each other too. So I nah, feel, Yeah, I see what you're saying. It, um, go ahead. I don't know, like, even though, like, I'm hurt by all the stuff that was said, that was put out and stuff, like, I just understand because I just understand how emotions work. Would you ever feel like you need to change the dynamic of how you run your relationships rather than maybe it being a throttle to it being I fuck with you over here and I fuck with you over there? So it's kind of like that thing of my name Bennett and I ain't in it. That's what you and your girlfriend got going on. I mean, that's a good question, but it's that's something I would have to seriously think about. But I, my mind been so gone for the last week, like I haven't even really like assessed everything that's happened. Have you ever assessed changing the dynamic of your relationship? The dynamic, no. Okay. Well, well, what do you mean? What do you mean by dynamic? Exactly what you mean. Like I don't mean dropping what, one. You mean like what's expected of each person in the relationship pretty much no 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 I don't I I mean more so like okay would it ever turn to like maybe swingers would it ever turn to like what I just gave that's what I'm well, that's what that's what I was trying to say okay. that's what I mean I know what you mean by dynamic okay like the roles like responsibilities and roles that's how I, that's yeah how like I mean. anything to any type of switch you wouldn't no I'm not saying I wouldn't I wouldn't you just don't know I just don't know <laughs> Poor Julian, you had a really fucking rough week. And it's it's right after my birthday. That's the hardest. Now we could take a shot. Are you a birthday person? Uh, it depends. It de I think like for big birthdays, so like twenty one, twenty five, thirty. But like the meaningless birthdays, I, it don't make a difference. I want to share something with you. Go ahead. Um, when you started, you said your life has a habit of taking you on a sh extreme high, then dropping you low. Roller coaster shit. And I hear that a lot. And I used to say that a lot. And when I stopped saying it, it stopped happening. I feel like you kind of project, project it on yourself because it started happening. You overly think about it to kind of know that, yeah, this shit just going to be a roller coaster. And I think that's what happens when you think like that. Like, you're, like, even though you're just on this great high, there might be some part of you subconsciously like, damn, I wonder what bad shit's going to happen because this maybe, shit is maybe too I great. Maybe right I now. do put that on myself. I, I could see myself, like, doing that to myself. Like, life is going so great right now, God. Lord, let me just prepare. Yeah. Yeah, once you start projecting that, it's going to keep happening. But, I mean, I don't hate anybody. I know I know you don't want me to do disclaimers and shit, but I really, I don't hate anybody. Do you want your relationship with the two people? I mean, of course I would in a perfect world, but, like, I have to be realistic. Do you think it can happen? You think all three of y'all can make up after this? I would, if I was to give it a percent chance, I'd say like ten percent. Okay. Do you think you and any of the parties? Well, have you and any of the parties made up? Uh not really. Not at this point. Mm. Do well. I don't know. I feel like everybody just should have a cuss out session and just blow it all off. See, that's that's another thing. <laughs> that's another thing about me. Like, like. I'm the type of person that I could get to my worst. I don't know. I just get over things so quick. And I don't know if bro, that's a, me too, I don't bro. know if that's a flaw or or if it's like if it's like It's just uncommon. So so it's not a flaw, it's just uncommon. That's what I've written. When I say as. get over things, I don't mean like get over the feelings I have for things, but just get over it in a totality of like like it may still hurt me, it may still bother me, mm -hmm. but like I'm not going to make it your issue. I'll just keep it as an internal thing. Like, that's my issue to deal with. And I agree with you. I've, I feel like mo more people should just put their issues on their hands. I was watching Jada again today, and somebody asked the question, how do I get over infidelity in my relationship? How do I stop thinking every time this person going out there doing something? You know, I, I need my person to reassure me. And the, the counselor was like, you know, the same reassurance you're looking for in that person, you could give it to yourself. And you know also about myself. Go ahead. You like my therapist right now. Yes, go ahead. So like I'm I'm like the type of person like if I'm happy, nothing else matters. 
And you want to know something? We are very similar in that because, like, my boyfriend will think it's the end of the world. Like, our relationship is done and feel like he's allowed to start talking to people at this point. And then when I check him, it's like we weren't together. And I'll be like, why did you think that? Because, and kind of like how you're like, I just went to my mom for four days. Why would you even think that I was yeah. done? That yeah. don't make no sense. We never done, nigga. What the fuck? And it's just because you're happy. So it's like, you. Julian always has this tweet. Why do girls do things that they know are going to make them unhappy? Like, go through somebody's phone. Yeah, like, I'm not, I forgot how the tweet really went. But it was kind of like that. I don't, I don't like oh no this was this was it women rather be right than happy i rather be happy than right but like guess i'm what? not if i have a suspicion i'm not jumping through hoops to like nah i know i know but it guess i know what? it, it cuz if i'm happy at the end of the day but i feel like and and i don't know it may I don't know. Niggas might be watching this like, oh, Julian a different type of nigga than I thought he was. But it's just like, I don't know. But it's also the feeling somebody give you. you you're you different. with. Either way, I feel like you did the same thing that you say girls do. Rather be right than happy. Because. Because I wanted her to confess. Yes. What, what the hell? You could have just moved on. You could have said, you know what? Thank you for this information. But I really don't want to hear it. I don't want the evidence. I don't want shit. I don't want nothing. I'm good where I'm at. I met a nigga at a bar. Listen. Listen oh, to this. This is a true story? True story. <laughs> I met a nigga at a bar. Uh-huh. And he said to me, he was like, oh, yeah, I have a wife. She live in Barbados or whatever the fuck. And I'm just like, okay, so where's your wife? You know, because he's trying to talk to me. And he's like, the thing about my wife, my wife does what she want to do sometimes and I don't like it, but I'm real about it. I've done a lot of my dirt. We've been married for 30 years. I've done so much dirt. We don't even live in the same city. She doesn't want to move to America with me. We see each other every week cause he goes every weekend yeah. and he says, and you know, when I go down there and I sit at the bar with my guy friends and they try to tell me about Sharon, <laughs> Why you put on a blast like that? Sorry, Sharon. <laughs> <laughs> he say, mind your fucking business. That's what that man told me at the bar. I was like, yo, I just met the realest nigga in life, yo. You told them niggas mind their business. And he's like, because we're good. We have investments together. We have kids. We have a whole, like, you know, it's like we have our shit going on. I'm good with my wife. My wife don't trouble me. I don't trouble my wife. And I. It sounded so fucked up. Like, yo, your wife a hoe. (laughs) Like, I wanted to say that. That sounds like some Will and Jada right there. Uh, But even with, if you listen to like Red Table Talk podcast, I think you should. I be watching it sometimes. I think with Jada, her more thing is she's not a conventional woman, not just sexually. It's just like, I don't want to wash dishes. I don't want to run behind you. I don't want to be your mom. Yeah. Because it takes away from her. But I just feel like overall, like you said, you need to know what makes you happy and you need to stick with that. And I hope these words stick with you. Send that text. Get drunk. <laughs> make that shit happen. All right, we can take a shot. Now. Okay. Y'all, y'all see, I love putting people back together. To any of the ladies listening, which I know you are because I'm a girl. That's what we do. Stalk people we don't talk to. Um, you know, do what makes you happy. Make not sure what makes the media happy. So now that we're done talking about my week, <coughs> star. What's been going on in your life? And I'm going to finish your shot because you bullshit. Oh, oh. How can y'all drink with this man? Um, Let's see. How was my... Well, last week was not a good week for me. I was not feeling well. <laughs> I was just not in a happy place. Um, I was having relationship issues as most couples do. You know what I think? What? I was thinking this on a flight when I was coming here. Was Mercury in retrograde? I don't know about that. Never mind. <laughs> but we did episode one of the podcasts. We talked about our relationships, and then we both wasn't, like, doing so good in relationships. <laughs> like, the next week, I was like, is this podcast bad luck? Julian, do not put that energy on this bomb-ass, good-luck-ass podcast. All right, so that means it's not bad. If it's not bad luck, that means after this episode drops, so we got some good fortune in our future. It depends on what you want. Of course I want good fortune. But I'm go just saying the good fortune that you want. It depends oh, on what you want. specifically. What you want. You need to take time to reflect. Vacation's over, bud. 
I'm gonna I'm text you. Hey, it's Wednesday. Are you reflecting? You got anything else to say about your week? N- nothing to say. All right. So moving along. That wasn't even a topic for today. Today's topic is love languages. Mm-hmm. And if you follow Star on social media and you've been following me for a while, this is something that I would say me and Star are both passionate about. So when we thought about this podcast off rip, we definitely said this is something we got to touch. So Star, Star, I, I seen one of your videos in the car you was talking about love languages, but you are you were talking about like the compatibility right. of like you having a certain love language and your partner having a certain love language. Right. So the first thing I want to ask you, well, what are the, the five love languages? Go ahead. Tell them. So there's words of affirmation, which is, oh, you look beautiful today or, you know, saying nice things to your partner. Physical touch, smacky a booty randomly through the day, rubbing you up when they see you. Um, receiving gifts is coming home with flowers or anything cute. Um, quality time is walking through the door with me because we just spent the day together. And acts of service is doing things to take, you know, stress off the person's shoulder. So, like, going to Home Depot because you know they need a hammer when they get home. All right. So, when I was coming here, I was like, damn. I didn't know if I was thinking too highly of myself or whatnot. But I was like, <laughs> I was thinking, like, what's my ideal, like, love language for myself? And I was looking and I was like, I ain't going to lie. I'm like the ultimate lover because all of these shits apply to me. Like I literally thought that I did all of these things equally, but then I really like looked into the description of the love language. And I would say the one love language where I'm personally slacking, I would say is quality time. You don't give a lot of time. So listen, so the key word in quality time is quality time. Mm -hmm. I give a lot of time, right? But quality time as is described on this sheet is uninterrupted and focused conversation one-on-one time is critical now to me what quality time is is just having you in my presence okay playing I video always, games I, while you exactly. sit there exactly i'm 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 like a dude where i just always want my girl around in my presence it just makes me feel better when, when my girl is in my presence. It's not like an insecure thing or security thing. It's literally like it just makes me feel better. But then when I read it uninterrupted, me, I have a short attention span. So, like, I'm the type of nigga that quality time for me is like, okay, we laying down. Let's watch this Netflix movie. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to fall asleep in the first 30 minutes. Bro, I hate that shit. So, to to by definition, that wouldn't be really no. quality time. No. But to me, it's like, what you mean? Like, we, we spent time. Like, we just watched it. Even though I fell asleep 30 minutes into the movie, we still got to lay down together, go to sleep. You, you feel me? Whatever. Mm-hmm. But by definition. It's not. That's not quality time. So, I personally, and I'm not trying to sound like this Superman, but. The only part where I'm lacking that is quality time, and I blame it on my short attention span. So, do you feel that your girlfriends would say the same? Definitely. That's great. Definitely. Have they told you that? We don't really discuss, like, love languages and stuff really? like that. Really? Nah. I know you, Y'all never took the quiz together or nothing? I, I take the quiz on my own. <laughs> and you don't send them the link? I, of course, but it's not like, it's not been like a, it's not been like a, a really like a discussion type thing. Mm, that's interesting. You are you bad could, at quality time. You could tweak the quiz too. So the, the quiz ain't 100% accurate. Mm. You could tweak it. But all right, but I just want to ask you, out of these five, where, which one do you think you're lacking the most in your love language? So mine is quality time, but which one do you think you're lacking? If you had to pick one, because look, Star thinks she's she's the all around lover too. It gotta be one. Can I call my boyfriend? I don't. It gotta be one. There's look. I'm just saying. It doesn't mean that you don't do it at all, but it just doesn't compare to the others. Mm. Can I can I guess for you? Just Just basically, go ahead. I would say. No, I would say I would say acts of service just. And the reason I would say that is because you got so much going for yourself as your own entity, as your own brand, as your own business that maybe I wish that was true. Oh, see, it's it's, I I have a serious problem when I start dating somebody 
I get too into that. Okay, so while I had this whole company going, when Lincoln thought of his company, I stopped literally what I was doing just to make his website. Mm. Um, then I have to cook. And then if I go to the grocery store, I'm going to bring you back like a chocolate or a guava pastry because you like that. And when you're eating, I'm going to rub your back. Like, I, I'm really, I'm really perfect. Sorry. All right. So, star, I, star. I don't think I'm lacking in any way. I, I don't. So, what about quality time? Just like I said, I have a short attention span. Do you want to know something? Go ahead. I think <laughs> I'm lacking. I'm going I'm to I'm quiz you on each of these things. I think I'm lacking in um the reverse of quality time. Which is what? Not giving you time alone. <laughs> like. Okay. I, I don't give space. That's the issue in my relationship. None of these have. And because, you know, we talk about this. I pulled up the quiz. I pulled up each one. And I've said, okay, I want to be a better girlfriend. And I want you to be a better boyfriend. This is what I need from you. What do you need more from me? Mm -hmm. And he's like, honestly, you do all of this shit. I love all of this shit. I just don't. I'm not good at doing all of that shit. And that, and I still do. I'm not a petty person. Just because you're not doing it, it doesn't change the fact that I still want to do that for you. I mean, that's amazing. You just, you all around town. Hello. So good pussy, good job. I just got to go through <laughs> receiving gifts. I'm gift queen. So I'm, Well, yeah, for you, it would be giving gifts. But uh, so let's on the flip side, receiving gifts, how much does that mean to you? Like, where would you rank that on your love languages? Receiving the gifts. Huh? Is that very important? A little bit important? Not important at all? Is it just a, a bonus? Like, it's not expected? Receiving gifts first and quality time second. That's how you like to be loved? Yeah. So, receiving gifts is the most important love language for you. Oh, my God. You sound like Lincoln. Like, this is such a bad thing. Are you judging me? Yo, Lincoln. I'm going to take a shot for Lincoln. Because she said receiving gifts is the most important thing. That's insane. <laughs> if you if you don't get me stuff, I don't feel right. I, I, I feel wrong. And honestly, the first time I told him that that's my lung, love language, he was like, oh, so you a hoe. <laughs> I was like, nah, but what? Check this out, receiving gifts. So when the listeners hear that, they, they might think that you you talking like Gucci slides and, no. you know, like something expensive, but like. It says thoughtfulness makes your spouse a priority. So it could, it could be it could be a chocolate heart. It could be something. It doesn't have to be expensive gifts. It does not have to be expensive. Like come home with a hot fry. A what? Hot fry, a bag of hot fries. Like, like hot fry. <laughs> like <laughs> hot like fries. Chips? Like chips. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you so drunk. No, she said a hot fry. It, Cheetos. Okay. Hot that, fries. Come home with a hot fries and some and a pickle egg. That's what you consider a gift. That is a gift to me. Not, but that's what I'm saying. I had to clarify because when you said it, that was your number one. Like I know people probably thought you meant like extravagant stuff. But I you know, do you, like you extravagant shit too. Vacations. I, and so exactly. But that goes into quality time because a vacation is a gift, but we're spending time together. And even with the gifts, the other day he did something so thoughtful was. He he took me downtown to where the designers are to spend time with me, walk and stroll, and then buy me a gift. That was like the best day ever for me. Now shout out to Lincoln. Yeah, that was so nice. So where does physical touch rank? If 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 receiving gifts is number one, where does physical touch rank on how you like to be loved? Do you want to know physical touch is probably last? But I, I thought we was twins. I know it's so weird. Cause you know you know like for me that's that's number one physical touch of how i like to be loved how do you like to give love physical touch <laughs> are you serious over giving gifts yeah over that's i'm a so yes i would think yours was words of affirmation nah that's probably that's low on my list to As, give no, or to get to get to give is probably it's probably in the middle to i would swear you love words of affirmation i mean word it says Encourage, affirm, appreciate, and I, I ain't gonna lie. It's this is the person that says I don't care if I seen you naked a billion times. Send me nudes so I can so imagine. So is nudes considered a word of affirmation? Basically, I'm telling you, I fuck with See, you. See, now nigga. you just changed the game. I I feel like body tell is a good language, and it goes, I guess, because physical touch, because you're imagining yourself 
on that. Okay. I would I would, I would consider nude pictures receiving gifts. Oh, you think a nude is a gift? That's how much I appreciate it. I wish Lincoln was like that. <laughs> my life would be easy, bitch. That's a gift for me. You don't have to buy me shit. But I feel like it's also telling you something. What is it telling me? That you listen to me because you say that. You know what I'm saying? So it's affirming that I'm that nigga because I made you listen. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I guess it's whatever you interpret it as. But physical touch, it really is low for me just because... I do care if you touch me, but I'm always touching this you. Is, this is sex Dr. Star speaking but, right now. But that's what I'm saying. Because I'm always touching you, you end up touching me. So I guess that's why I don't care because I like giving physical touch. All right, so how about this? With physical touch, do you think you're more of the initiator or or you would say your boyfriend is more of the initiator with physical touch? I think I'm the initiator. Really? Yes. I love touching. I lo- like I would be in the grocery store and start feeling on your dick. <laughs> Yo, Star is trying to market herself like she is just the shit. I I I, I wish my bo- we're going to do an ep- when everything's good, we're going to do an episode <laughs> with our partner and we're going to run this question back because I wish you only knew. I w- I'm a crazy person. Why you think he's still with me? Like, I'm really good at all of this. All right. So. Wh- Words of affirmation. Yes. I lit- literally, I'll tell you, I randomly say, oh, my God, you're so damn sexy. Or I'll say, I'm so proud of you. You're so smart. So and he just busts out laughing she, at me. Malik, she coming off a little too perfect. Ain't it? She, she, <laughs> but Mal- that's why I'm Malik, crazy. She just do everything. But that's why I'm crazy, Julian. All right. So. Before we move on, how how you show your love? Rank them, rank them. Go from one to five. I, go ahead. You said number one. What? How you show your love? Not how you receive the love. How you show your love? Just rank them real quick. I show my love with. I show love by giving gifts, by words of affirmation, then quality time, then acts of service, then and physical, physical touch, touch last. And how you would like to receive. Your love, go ahead. All of this shit. <laughs> so it's not, it's just all, I, you appreciate all of it. Receiving gifts does come first, then quality time. But then F, F, everything after that, do whatever order you need to, just get it done. Okay. So for me, how I like to show love, physical touch is definitely number one. Acts of service is number two of how I show love. Words of affirmation is number three. Receiving gifts or giving gifts in this case would be number four and quality time would be number five. And how do you like to receive love? I would say physical touch is number one. Uh, Damn. Physical touch is number one. And what? This, receive, this is tough. It is. Uh, it's gifts. Nah, it's not gifts. Gifts can't be two. I would say physical touch number one. Sorry for repeating myself. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Words of affirmation is probably number Told two. You. Then acts of service. Acts of service. Mm-hmm. Receiving gifts. Then quality, quality time. time is last. Because like of I what s- quality time means. Exactly. Just the real definition. But for those for those watching. If if your partner loves words of affirmation, things to avoid is non-constructive criticism. That means like if you just if you just got something negative to say without that's a dumbass w- idea, bro. Without a solution, <laughs> what? Nah, some people is like no. That. That's what I'm saying. Oh, you see how good that was? Yeah. It's like if you just say nah, that's so dumb. And then a big no no for words of affirmation is not recognizing or appreciation appreciating efforts. Mm. And that's that's big for me because sometimes I feel like my effort goes unnoticed. Oh, niggas. And that makes me feel like, hold on, am I not loved? All oh, niggas. That's a, a man pride ego thing. It might be. I, I mean. No, I'm serious. I watched it. Uh, the, the pastor, he was speaking about that. And he said, you know, you want to get your man to do more instead of saying you did it wrong. Be like, thank you. I appreciated that. That shit will work. And I, and I started doing that and it works. That's it. 
It's just simple. It's like it's like there there might be like a a cheat sheet on how how to treat your man. It is. If you want to get the most from him. It is. I Fi- agree. Now if if your lover is a physical touch type of person, things that you need to avoid is physical neglect, long stints without intimacy, and receiving affection coldly. Coldly. What does that mean? It means like, "Oh my god, you always want to hug me." Yo, I'll punch the wall. <laughs> like next next one we need a counselor. <laughs> <Yo. laughs> crazy. Like what? Like you always rub my booty. Like yeah. <laughs> like what the fuck? That's crazy. All right. If if your partner is a receiving gifts type of person, things you want to avoid is forgetting special occasions, anniversaries, birthdays, uh holidays. Wednesday. Cr- <laughs> <laughs> it's Wednesday. Here's your. Kids. That's not. That's not a special occasion. I'm just saying to avoid that too. Don't and and also you want to avoid unenthusiastic gift receiving. So if if they give you a gift and you're like, oh, it's nice, like a little shot glass from Curacao, hmm. and then you just like and it. unenthusiastic gift giving. Yeah, just because you know that's their thing. Oh, here. Like yeah, so I was in New Orleans. Like there, bought your little shot glass, trying to take a shot. Yeah, Whack. avoid that. So, if your partner's love language is quality time, things you want to avoid, and this is like me talking to myself, distractions when spending time together. So, like me, I got a roommate. He might be like, "Yo, James Harden just hit fifty points. We having a great time watching the movie." I'm running out the room. <laughs> I'm like, "He just hit 50 I'm punching a wall. <laughs> <laughs> he, just, he just hit fifty. Yeah, it's going to be on YouTube later. Bring your ass now. Forgive me. <laughs> Do, is that something your partners complain about, though? Uh, not really. I, I was going to say what I can say from what I've got. I don't think it's something girls will complain about because you always want them around. So it's not like a, even those uninterrupted whatever. If I'm always with you, it doesn't feel as disrespectful exactly. as when if, we are If it's barely, like a rare time, like we haven't seen each other for three weeks, and then oh you like... God. You like on the video games and shit. That's more understandable. And if your partner's love language is acts of service, things you want to avoid is making the request of others a high priority. So pretty much, if you see that I need help with something, but then you tell me like, "Oh my god!" Like my, my we found my lowest one. Go ahead. Because because of things to avoid. That's that's my lowest. So one. you might make something else a higher priority, right? Or another person. What about lacking follow through on tasks, big or small? So like you say you're gonna do something, like you give them that promise, but then you're like, I, that could wait. Mm-mm. Nah. I do that. I just sometimes I probably I feel like if your task was okay, um, cook. And then somebody calls me to do something that they need right now or whatever. Mm-hmm. I'll go do that and I'll be like, when I get back, I'll cook. Okay. But I know how but, that makes but that's, my partner But that's feel. making it a higher priority. That's what I'm saying. That's oh. why, that's where I'm lacking. Okay, okay, okay. Not because I don't follow through with the act of service, but because I overbook myself and try to juggle everything. So now question. I know like you're big into like Zodiac signs and stuff like yeah. that. Do you think your love language compatibility is more crucial than zodiac sign compatibility oh shit this just got real for real only because you always every whenever we have a topic in here like when other people is in the room and shit she always asks somebody like what's What's your your sign sign? what's your sign and i'm like if you follow me you know i'm big on signs because i can't fuck with certain signs so like what signs can't you fuck with? Aquarius, Gemini. Boom, stop. So let's say you was talking to a Gemini. And what's your love language? Receiving gifts. Mm-hmm. What if they were the best? It was a Gemini, but it was the best gift-given Gemini in the whole entire world. The reason why it would never work is because Gemini don't care about quality time, and that's my second one. Mm. And maybe signs you, have a lot to do with your love languages. It might. Because guess what? Even my male friends that are Geminis, they be like, fuck, I just met a Virgo or a Scorpio today or a Cancer. Those are all like emotional signs. Hold on. So. Sorry. 
<laughs> now nah, I'm just so niggas come to you like, yo, I just met a cancer. Yes, <laughs> yo. I am the plug. Yo. Sis, I met a cancer. What what do I need to know? I'll say, bro, track star, if you're listening, leave it alone. Cancer is not for you. Don't waste that girl's time. But she's sexy. Leave it alone. She's going to annoy you because you want too much space. You know what the next episode is going to be about before we invite our mothers? You're going to teach me everything about Zodiacs. I think we should have a real Zodiac person come. Okay. Because there's much for me to learn. I think our mom should come, then the Zodiac girl. We could do that. Maybe we should get Aransa. Who is that? I'll show you her later. Oh. Uh, Zodiac girl on Instagram. Okay. I mean, we could do that. It's it, it's very important. Um, it's very, very important. I learned a lot about you. Yeah, I learned a lot about you. I, I'm going to pray for you. <laughs> Yo, I appreciate that. I think you should take a shot to no, close the show. No, we're not closing the show. You got to do the fan mail. Oh, shit. I forgot, y'all. Yeah, so before, before Wildstar searches this fan mail, right? My if you follow Shots of Honesty on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, all of that, we want y'all to send, send your questions. We're going to answer them live. Um, shots of honesty at gmail.com or you could just submit on the website shots of honesty.com so star is gonna read the mail of the week go ahead okay my question is what do you do after you found out that the person you've been dating for six months has been lying to you and that you are the matey me really really like the youth i'ma feel disrespected women do hold on all right you're the what Matey. So Matey is Jamaican version of side hoe. So, all right, so, so now read it, read, for... it one, read it one more time, but read it in, in English. Okay. <laughs> you got to. They knew I, I what I fan, said. I you got a fan South, base too. And, and they from South Florida. They know what the fuck I said. Right, okay, okay. My question, what do you do after you found out that the person you've been dating for six months has been lying to you and you are the side chick? I really, really liked him and I feel disrespected. What do I do? Mm. So six fucking months. First of all, the first thing you do is you gonna give your opinion. I'm gonna give my opinion. I feel like the first thing you do is need to change your ways because ain't nobody could have dated me for six months and I not know you got an old lady like that was not investigative enough. You're not investigated enough. That means you're not invested enough. That means I have to question if he knew he was your man and y'all was dating. I don't know. I just can't. Julian, I can't answer this question because I can't see how this can happen. And I've had friends who started talking to somebody and didn't know they were the side chick. But when I look at their situation, I be like, but it was clear. So the, the nigga that she's talking about, he must not have a social media. Yeah, If he didn't have an Instagram, then maybe you could get <laughs> by. But, bitch, I be at your house by the first week. <laughs> so. Oh, yeah, because remember, y'all, every guy that stars had sex with. Was her boyfriend. Period. <laughs> Don't ever forget that on this show. <laughs> <laughs> like, as soon as the dick goes in, we go together. Every guy. So, what would you do? Give him your If advice. I was her or just give her advice. What What would you do if you were her? If you were dating a girl and you find out, listen, you're dating this girl. <laughs> That's not happening go, can, to me. Can, for the viewer. Okay. You're dating this girl. You're really digging her. Uh huh. Then you find out she's fucking dating Odell Beckham. <laughs> I mean, if it's that crazy of a scenario, uh huh. I'm gonna finesse my way to get some of these Odell benefits. Oh my god! <laughs> City boys. I hate niggas. <laughs> City boys. Yeah. Oh, you dating Odell? Oh, oh, I need a new Yeah, Gucci I need some cleats. I need some cleats. We got a Thanksgiving football game coming up. Oh, wow. And a bitch would be down for that shit. Girl, that's right. At this point, if I'm dating you for six months, but Odell is an extreme. But if it was a regular guy, what would you do? I, I just don't see how a girl could pull this off. And maybe I'm naive. Oh, you are. A girl could have a nigga and date another nigga. If she's dating an Aquarius or a Gemini. All right, you sound crazy. And I swear to God, I dated an Aquarius. Like, literally. It's it's possible. They want so much space. It's They don't even like talking on the phone sometimes. Aquarius is like, what, jan- early do January? You know, do you know um, Britney's friend, Preja? Yeah. 
She's an Aquarius. I don't know how Aquarius don't put girls her out are. She did. No, I don't know. I don't know nothing about her life, but uh. Brittany is a Gemini. So when she posts her best friend, Praja, and I found out they're Aquariuses, I'm like, you guys are perfect for each other because you've been friends with Brittany long. Brittany's the person that she'll kind of go ghost for a second. Yeah. Come around. You can totally cheat on Brittany. <laughs> I tell <laughs> Brittany all the time. Yeah. I tell her. <laughs> oh, I'm braiding hair. What's, like, she'd be annoyed. Oh my God, I'm fucking doing hair. I gotta answer the phone. I'm like, girl, bitch, my nigga called me. Hold on, sis. Yeah, you're bra- your bra- Yeah. <laughs> I feel you. So I think it depends on who you're dating. When, I don't know. Yeah, I don't feel like we you answered gotta, the You girl gotta question. help her out, Star. Because I feel like that question was specifically for you. I do feel that you were disrespected. And I don't think there's nothing that you can do except decide if you're going to be a side chick or move on. And to be real about it, if you're going to be a side chick, I, I expect you to be a respectful one. And which that means is you know that it's not enough niggas for all of us. <laughs> Somebody got to be the side. Somebody got to be the main or do like Julian and be all together and fight each other. You got to pick one. You yo. got to, It's three options. You got to pick on some G shit. What can you do? Now, your opinion. My my opinion is six months six they've been months. dating. Okay, six months. So the thing about the six months, right? Mm-hmm. She says they've been dating, but I feel like have they been dating or have they been fucking? You know what and dating I, mean? No, 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 no. Some girls in their head, they mm-hmm. might be like, "We've been dating," but literally. We ain't even do shit. We've just been going to Wawa, <laughs> in the sub, going back to the crib, watching um, some shit on Netflix, having sex, and then you're going home. But, like, to some girls, because they might like a dude, that might be dating. So, it really depends on what... That's why I said I feel like they wasn't dating, because for six months to go by, but there's... They weren't dating. I'm a... We could We're going to assume that. And, and young ladies, I don't want you to feel offended by this. But what we mean is he was finessing you into thinking you were dating by playing off your emotions. That's what Where men do. He wanted you all to himself. That's what men do. They, they, they say, oh, yeah. They'll even send a text, oh, use with your other nigga. It don't mean shit, girl. It don't. He, he might send a text while he with the other bitch. <laughs> it, 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 it really don't. It's something us women, we just genuinely got to learn. It's like. You're, uh, ask him if y'all was dating for six months Then you'll know if you were dating And if he knows you were dating and cheating on you Just leave it I would say leave it alone Find someone who's up front that they got a girlfriend I would hate to be a side chick to a liar Or If if you if you really found out he got a girlfriend Just play the game No. Do your thing I'm saying do your thing What game is there to play You always end up with the short end of the stick I'm saying when woman, I say do your thing, you're 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 getting some type of satisfaction slash pleasure out of this person. She's not. It got for six months. This no, this is what I'm saying by that. It's like, and ladies, you could tell me if you agree. If you've been dating someone for six months and find out that you're a side chick, your emotions are invested in a way that you can't play the game properly. But if you found out from jump, yo, I got a girl, but, you know, we could have fun and and you still think the person's a fun person, you could kick it with that person because your mindset is different. Mm. But when your mind is set on this going to be my man, things are going so good, you may have met the parents, you thinking you going to get married in two years. Mm. Whereas if you meet an ain't shit nigga. How, how long do you think it should take for you to get married? <gasps> this is a really great question. You we, have to we answer. We can say this. For- <laughs> no, shots of honesty. Last question. Last yeah. question. It's not. Last question. No, it's not the last question, first of all, because okay. I got questions to ask you for shots of honesty. Okay. Well, I asked first. Go ahead. How long do you think it should take before you get married to somebody? I don't think there's a time. I think you just know. I don't think you just know. I think a lot of things play into it. Like, like what? Like... Like if I'm gonna go marry somebody else because it's the clock is ticking. No, let's say you met somebody at the age of seventeen. Mm-hmm. Marriage might not be in your immediate plans at that age. I don't know about that, Shotty. I can't. I can't agree with that. I don't know about that. I know people that literally, as soon as they turn eighteen, they want to be married. So do you? Do they you, go off to the army. No, I'm not. No, I'm not saying that it's not possible for that to happen. Mm-hmm. But I'm saying like. Me, if I thought back to my 17-year-old self, my 19-year-old self, my 21-year-old self, my 23-year-old self, I didn't know shit. Mm-hmm. 
You feel me? But and and I'm a lot of people. Now. No, now yeah, it's different. But I'm saying when you're younger, a lot of people you don't know like you don't know life. Like you think you know life, but you don't know life. I don't think you ever really figure life out. I think you do. No. Well, that part doesn't matter, but I really feel like you just tiptoed around a question. I didn't. So what was the answer? When do you feel like is an appropriate time to stop dating and say, let's tie the knot? Two years, three years, five years, ten years. But you're asking somebody that's not engaged and not married. So I wouldn't know the appropriate time. So you don't feel like after three years, you know a girl well enough to say, I want this to be my wife or I don't want this to be my wife. See, I want to give context. Oh, my God. No, no, no. <laughs> I want to give I want to give context to my answer. But I'm not really trying to like put people on blast, but I guess I have to. So like it's shots of honesty. Right. And you didn't take your shot. So go ahead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yo. Stars are fucking like yo, go you ahead. can't trust women. Just you can't. Right. So my mom mm-hmm. has been in a committed relationship. Mm-hmm. They live together for since the mm-hmm. early 2000s like the super early 2000s mm-hmm. it's it's almost 2020 they're not married mm-hmm. they're happy mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. I, I, obviously it's as far as i could see mm-hmm. they're happy they're living together my dad mm-hmm. has been in a happy relationship since the late 2000s like close to 2010 they're living together they're not married mm-hmm. It like in technical terms, it would just make sense for them to just be married because they literally do right. everything together. But for some reason, my dad's not married. My mom's not married. Mm-hmm. I never would asked. Would you like to join the not married train? No, but okay. I'm saying that to say that they're much older than me. They've been through more life than me. They've, they've experienced more things than me. <laughs> I wouldn't laugh right now. I'm sorry, I'm drunk. <laughs> Yo. I'm just saying. <laughs> the thing is, is because I want to say my grandma, she's experienced much more life than me, but she's living with a man she's been with and they're married. So I feel like everyone's life is different. No, but I'm, I want both my grandparents opinion. were married. Yeah. So I want your opinion. Like, do you feel like there's a, a time frame where, you know, some people feel like you could just look at someone and know if this you can marry this person. I don't agree with. That. But OK, so then. Marriage in these days is it's more it's more than like just a thing. It's a financial commitment because a wedding, a wedding to to make your wife happy, depending on who your wife is. Right. You might not be financially equipped, equipped for a wedding. However, I do. It might be like you want to marry this person. But right now I can't provide you the wedding that you want. This being your first wedding, you've never been married before. You have this idea of a picture perfect wedding and we're going to get married, but we're, I'm just waiting till I could provide for you the wedding you want. Exactly. So because I feel like for a lot of women, marriage is more about the wedding than a marriage. And I'm, I'm not like that, but I'm the minority. How you know what you like? You've been no, married before? No, damn near close. Uh, but see, look, star is just the perfect. Person. No, I'm not the perfect person. I did some con shit, but it, that doesn't matter. What I'm trying to say is this. I feel like after a certain period of time, my boyfriend would know, like I'm in a relationship. It's about three years now. If Lincoln did not start talking about marriage, I feel like I need to start taking my life elsewhere. But I feel like so this- you have a cutoff limit. Now I do. But here's the funny part. Here's the funny part. Listen, Drew, you, you, it's going to be crazy. When I met him, I was at the point because I just had that situation where I almost got married. When I met Lincoln, I did not want to be married. Marriage was a piece of paper for me. But guess what Lincoln says? And my best friend, money is also a piece of paper. You chase that shit daily, don't you? You're right. Guess what? If my partner thinks highly of marriage, all right. I'm not opposed to it. I'm going to be with you anyways. It's nothing that you could do right now that would make me want to leave you. I Probably there's nothing you can do because I've made my decision that I'm happy with you. And if that should ever change, I, I'd probably seek counseling before I left. So if you want to be married, I'm more than happy to be married to you. 
at, and that's at three years, you want to talk about that. But if he talked about that in our first year of meeting, I would not be open to it. I see that. I see what you're saying. So it's not that I have a cutoff limit, but if we're together five years and there's no marriage. But what if you're happy? I, I still need to go. Because guess what? You're not going to. There's this is the thing. Like you said, marriage, there is a financial obligation. But it's also a contract for me. The way I see my life, I'm at the stage where I'm trying to invest in stuff. Me and you are not buying a house together if we're not married. Because guess what I'm going to have to do? I'm going to have to say, okay, well, baby, you know, before we buy this house, I have to get some lawyers because we do need to get on paper who's going to get what should we split. And that's just the bullshit. Every time we got to buy something, I have to do that. You're, you're, it's like you're getting a prenup every investment. Yeah, I feel you. So it's like, where are you taking your life? If you know, if you wanted to throw a party with somebody, I don't know if y'all sign contracts, but y'all know who does what. Y'all mm-hmm. are pretty clear. When you're in a relationship but not married, the role is not even clear. You get what I'm saying? I can't go to a hospital and say, pull the fucking plug. My, if, if you always say to, you know, your girls, if I'm in bad condition, tell them pull the plug because I don't want to be in pain. If you see me in pain, pull the plug. I don't care what. And they go to the hospital and they say, my man is dying. Pull the plug. Don't revive him. Don't do none of that. That's what he said. Who are you again? Mrs. Who? Bitch, get your ass out of here. You just his <laughs> girlfriend. Nah, I feel you. So, I don't know. I feel like you should revisit it. I think you should get married. <laughs> hey, <all right. laughs> so... No. Before we end the show, we got to do shots of honesty, right? Okay. So when I was walking back there, I had to use the bathroom. Mm -hmm. It was dark as fuck. (laughs) Okay. So my first little shots of honesty is take a shot right now if you ever had sex in your sweet cookie jar studios. Hmm. Don't lie to me. No, no, no. I literally have to think. I don't think so. Come. I but I wanted to. I tried to initiate sex and it didn't happen. But you know I'm gonna take a shot because I want y'all to check my my homie King Noir out on Pornhub because he did have a, sex in here in here and it's on Pornhub and the girl is shooting fire at her pussy. So maybe during you, sex during sex. So if you look up fire pussy on Pornhub, maybe you'll see it. And I allowed them and you'll see sweet cookie and it was during Christmas time. So are you telling the viewers that? Sweet Cookie Jar Studios is it's also a, a a porn studio. <laughs> is that what she's? It's not. A or porn it was just studio. a one. It was a one time thing. It's it was my act of service. Oh, okay. To you, share my location with some porn people that what do you call them? Porn stars that needed a cool spot, and it was great promo for me. So, are you taking a shot to that? Damn, I did agree to that. We almost done, star. Mm. Let, let watch a shot. <laughs> <laughs> cheers go ahead no nah, it ain't cheers you gotta ask me you gotta tell me what I gotta take a shot to if I did something mm, that's too intense yeah come on spare you me you had an intense night I'm and spent a- intense week mm. um hmm this is hard because everything that is interesting to ask is really a low blow. And I don't want to do yeah, that to you because I don't want you to do it to me. Don't do that to me. Um, in shots of honesty, based on everything that we covered today, if you could have your relationship your way, what would it be right now? It, that's a very general question. You can tweak it. I'll take a shot to that since it's just a general question. Mm-hmm. You can't go back in the past and what? change nothing. But it's just, if you could walk out of this building, what would you want your love life to be when you walk out of this building? I would, I'm sitting there. I would definitely, if, if I could choose, I would definitely want both my girlfriends and we all in a happy, committed relationship together. Okay. It's okay. You'll need to snort crack before that. But <laughs> Yo. It's, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Yo. We all have you hopes ask. and dreams you and ask. aspirations. But that was a great fair in the middle answer. It, it, you know what? This the, You're good for this, Julian. You're, I, I, I don't know your personal ins and outs, but you're really a good mediator middle person. I could not. You could not what? I, I'm not good at being in the middle. 
I'm like in relationships. I mean, when I'm listening to people, I'm very like, mm hmm. But in relationships, I'm never in the middle. Like either my boyfriend's. Hey, listen, no, look, no shots to Lincoln. Mm hmm. But I could see you handling two niggas. Like, listen. <laughs> like, I can't. Like, yo. I can't. I'm doing this podcast. I can't. Y'all niggas fucking play mad until I get home. No, <laughs> like, I can't. I guess. And you want to know the funniest thing? I'm so... Lincoln always says this. It's so funny how you're submissive, but so I know so Lincoln rude. cussing out the screen right now. <laughs> he's so, no, he's so, he's so... He says I'm submissive, but so, like, rude and feisty. I can't just because it's... For example, when we were dating another girl, like, we're in a group chat... She kind of always, she was a Libra, so she had me facilitate the cuss out. Like, she would bring something. Facilitate the cuss out to him? To Lincoln. So, it would be like, I'm, I put, I picked a side, I'm on her side. So, if she tells me something just happened on live that she didn't like, like he was on Instagram live popping shit. Oh, no, that's inappropriate. So, now it's Barbie and Star against Lincoln. And Barbie's not going as hard. Hold on. What? <laughs> what? Malik, we got time. Okay, no. okay. No, he's just hold on. is is this the girl that I seen? Barbie, you know Barbie? No, no, no. I don't know any names. Don't don't throw names at me. I'm talking about for my birthday. Is this oh no 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 no. Bar- this is old shit. It's like when we first met. Okay. Literally when we first met. So can I ask you? Go ahead. I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but can I the the girl I was? If you put me on the spot, you're getting on the spot. So, play nice. Okay, I'm just asking. Mm-hmm. The girl that was present at the strip club for my birthday. They finna go look up the photos, dog. I what didn't. I fuck? didn't post her. I didn't post her. Okay, go ahead. What What was she to y'all? Cause the a vibe. I, right. I'm just keeping it honest. A friend. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what it look like, girl? <laughs> I was like, now she off limits, ain't it? <laughs> I, I no, but I, in all honesty, we we didn't even have sex that night. I know, cause y'all was drunk as fuck. I would have loved to. I mean, we could have. No, you was drunk as fuck. No, actually, she's the reason we didn't have sex. She was too drunk. But y'all bagged her and brought her there. No, that's not how it happened. It was more like you know when you're too drunk. No, I'm saying, but y'all backed her prior to that and then brought her there. No, because she was a friend. So it's not that, like. That's what I'm saying. She was a friend before right, that right, night. Right. That's what I meant. Yeah, right. yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Hey. Listen. You know I, what was funny that night? When when I saw you smiling, I told Lincoln the next day, I was like, in our podcast, Julia said, I look like the wingman in the Friends. And definitely. I'm like, and I'm totally the wingman. But honestly, that night, we did not expect none of that. We're just all having fun. No, I feel you. And I knew y'all was too drunk to do anything after that. I mean, I got it in after. I don't oh, care how you, drunk you I am. Oh, you wasn't too drunk. You No. Uh, right. <laughs> what the fuck? Physical touch. Physical touch. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hey, look. I'm going to wrap it up. <laughs> this was another episode of Shots of Wait, Honesty. Wait, last shot. Are okay. you drunk? No. Okay, take a shot. My nigga OG driving anyway. So what are you going to do after this? I think you should. I'm going to go cry. No, I think you should, I think you I, should make I, a drunk text. I'm going to go cry. <laughs> that was honest. I think you should just do that go ahead, drunk texts. No, I'm drunk. You just said we going to take another shot. I said you because you're no, no, not no, no, drunk. No, no, You said we. I'm drunk. I no, just, you, I said, did y'all not? I can't wait till the playback. I said, are you drunk? You said no. So you didn't say we're going to take another shot? No, why would I say that? All right. All right, so, fine. Fuck. Thank you. We're going to take another shot. You said, what am I going to do after this? I'm about to go cry. No, you're not. Right. Pull up on your girl. Why they don't live with you? This this where you fucked up. When you live with somebody, it's hard to get out. Shit. I be moving out the house and moving right back in the same day because where hey, I'm going to go. Shotsofhonesty.com. The Twitter, Shots of Honesty. The Instagram, Shots of Honesty. The Hash- Facebook, Shots of Honesty. Mm-hmm. We live at the Sweet Cookie Jar Studios. Period. Shout out to Compound Miami for sponsoring this Duce bottle. We got to half of it. We couldn't finish the whole thing. Shout out to Malik, the producer. Ricky, the producer. Skinny OG in the building. 
And don't forget to get on the website, ask your questions. We're going to answer one question every episode. Make it a good question, though, please. Ju- and even send in topics. If you want to hear certain topics, if you want to hear more about our, well, Julian's interesting life, then let us know. We're happy to please you. And Star is the perfect lover, and I ain't sure. <laughs> All right, drop. Peace out. Oh, you the guilt trip type of nigga. <laughs> oh, let me guilt my way back to you.